<laughs> I'll be so proud of us. Hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. Hello. And welcome to Monique and Sydney's Open Relationship, baby. How is everyone doing this amazing day? Hey, Daddy. Hey, who are you? I'm your wife. And who else? I'm your girlfriend. And who else? You said, welcome to Monique and Sydney's Open Relationship. I am Monique. And I'm Sydney. Right, Daddy. Yeah, you didn't share that with the people who tuned in. Well, I thank you. And you know what? We didn't start with the music today. All right, well, you know what? We can do without. Y'all know what? I really like the music to open up the show, okay? And I really appreciated this, the music you gave us last time we I did it. I forgot what it was, baby. You was just going on, 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 like that. Yeah, it is. You know what? You were wow. You were wow. wow. boy. We want to welcome y'all, baby, and thank y'all for joining us to each and every one of y'all. Today's show and today's topic is what? Tell them, baby. How to deal with toxic people. How to deal with toxic people. And Here's why we came up with the show, okay? So this past weekend at uh, the show in Vegas, Monique Does Vegas at the SLS Hotel, there was a sister that came up to me at the end of the show doing the meet and greet. Now, we did a special Pride edition this weekend in Vegas, and Pride is for our gay babies. So we did a special edition. We did a drag queen dance number, baby. It, it was everything for me. Because I've always wanted to dance with a drag queen. So I was one on drag queen this past weekend. So anyway, after the show, doing the meet and greet, the sister comes up to me. And she was a gay baby. And she says to me, how do you get toxic people out of your life? Damn. And then I said, well, if you know that they're toxic and they're making you sick mentally, physically, spiritually, you may have to make some different decisions and choices about those people. And then she came back and said, what is if your mother? What if, what if it's your mother? There you go. I know, baby, right? I got time to say, what if it's your mother? And I said, even when it is your mother, toxic people come in all forms. Strangers, your mamas, your daddies, your friends, Cousins, then you got to ask the question, am I the toxic person? But as she asked me that, thank you, sweetness, and her eyes were filling up, it was almost like, I don't know what to do because it is my mother. And then she went on to explain her mother didn't accept the lifestyle. Her mother didn't approve of who she was. And she just didn't know what to do with it. And my feelings were, this is your ride. And you only get one ride that you know of. So I don't know if I told her the right or wrong thing, but I said, even when it includes your mother, if it's toxic, if it's cancerous, you got to let it go if you can't make it better. There you go. Okay. There you go. But you get the answer at the beginning of the show. But we're going to get other people's because it's no right, wrong, which way, because guess what? Every situation is different. Yes. And at the end of the day, oftentimes when you listen to people talk, they act like they're going to give you the answer. When in actuality, you have to give yourself the answer. We're just going to discuss different ways we can go. But it's up to us as individuals to come up with the right way. And, you know, to, the caller number is 470-282-1802. Because, again, like my daddy always says, we don't proclaim to have all the answers. So this is one of those shows where if you had to deal with toxic folks and you had you came up with, with a solution, you may have the solution that can help somebody else deal with their toxic folk. Let's go to the lines and find out. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hi, this is Diana. I'm calling from Philly. Hey, Diana from Philly. Talk to us, baby. Hey, hey. Yes, hi. Um, this is my third time talking. You guys, I love you guys so much. Uh, I appreciate you know um, you wanting to hear me out. But I, the way I deal with toxic people is I don't deal with them. Um, what I usually do is I kind of fill the person out, and if I look at their demeanor and their actions, and I know that they're um, like if they're just malicious. You know, my angel always said, um, if you if someone tells you who they are, believe them. Yes. So. So that, that's what I look at, and when I see toxic people, you know, coming into my job or whatever, I mean, I'll be professional, but I'm very, very distant 
Um, if I know what somebody's about and I see that I don't go off of third party information. It's three o'clock. So I just avoid them as much as I possibly can. There you go. Avoidance, baby. That that'll get him out your <laughs> that'll get him out your space. We love you, baby. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Bye, love my you, baby. baby. And special shout out to Mon Fatuli from New Zealand. We got to shout out people from New Zealand that's going to take out the time to check us out. Much hey, my love. babies, to all our New Zealands. Come, is that New Zealanders or New Zealanders? What is it? Well, we're going to let them tell us. We're going to write. They're going to tell us. They're going to tell people us. how you deal with them. How? And you know, someone in the um in the room says, my family was toxic and I had to let them go. And sometimes I will all speak for me, okay? Kiki. My family was very toxic, but I believe I was toxic too. And for a long time we dealt with each other in a toxic environment and it was very cancerous and it was, it was um, unhealthy for all of us. And when Sid and I got together the way we did, that's when I was able for me to say, I gotta break away because if not, I'm going to take this sickness into my own family, which I did because I was still very sick and I was still very toxic, but I was afraid to walk away from that because then I was saying to myself, I'm not gonna have anybody. So I'd rather stay in this toxic situation than to be by myself, as crazy as that sounds. But I was too afraid knowing, I knew, I knew that all of us were mentally ill. My mother, my father, my brothers, my sister, we were all suffering from it, but was all unwilling to make it better. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with toxic people in your environment? Let's go to the lines. Hey, you on with Monique and Sydney? Who's this and where you're calling from? Hi, I'm Sydney Uncle. Hey, I'm baby. I'm from Atlanta. This is Michelle. I don't know if you guys remember me. I knew one that had an issue with my family, and you told me, okay, you told me to cut my family off, and I told you I did. Um, I saw the topic um, about how did you get rid of, or how you deal with toxic people, and you just said something. You said you were toxic as well. I just had to come to the conclusion that I was toxic as well, because if you're dealing with toxic people and you came from your family, that's toxic. Of course, you're going to be toxic, because of uh, the, um, the transfer of energy or just because of the mindset or just dealing with toxic people all together. I, since you have told me that, since you guys have encouraged me, I am feeling so much better and my daughter. Come on. You guys have no idea when the branch is cut off from the tree. You got to go and replant that branch and so it can grow by itself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's how I'm handling me the toxic people that was in my life, which that was my family, which I do not deal with none of them anymore whatsoever. Is that I'm by myself now, planted and growing on my own, and I'm learning everything that I was learning inside, and I've learned everything that I've taught. I am learning. I'm unlearning it. I'm not that mm-hmm. close to other people. Um, I'm just checking my own self. I'm killing the layers back on my own. That's what I'm doing. Yes. We appreciate yes, it. Yes, we love you, baby. Now, when she just said I had to peel the layers back for myself, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> I didn't, you know, when, when Sid and I were talking about this earlier, I really didn't think that I would have too much to share, but as I sit here and I think about it, like, Daddy, don't chuckle like that. You knew you would have much to share because you were you, no, you, not, you the one who thought about it. Go ahead, baby. So you got it. when the caller just says, I had to peel the layers back on myself. That's something I had to do, too. Like, I had to figure out what was my issues. 
Like what was going on with me that was making me toxic? What was that thing that kept me comfortable being sick? Mm -hmm. And when you're raised in that environment, and when you're raised in it, you don't know that it's toxic at the time. You just know that's what you're raised in. So you don't know what label to give it. You don't know that when your parents aren't speaking for months on end, and you hear them say good morning and good night, but no other conversation, and you know it's a lot of tension, well, you can't identify that as a child. It's just what it is. So when you grow up and that's what you know, you don't even realize you're being toxic. And in addition to that, what I'm about to say is counterintuitive to how we operate, but sometimes that's how the results become different. When we say, how do we deal with toxic people or people who are acting toxically? Because oftentimes in the heart of who they are, they're not toxic people. They've adapted a way of being and that's how they are. And oftentimes they're unconscious to the fact that that's how they are. Mm. But when you see people in regular life dealing with toxic waste, they put on a hazmat suit. And we have to put on an intellectual and spiritual hazmat suit, which when we deal with people who are toxic, our hazmat suit is happiness. Mm. Our hazmat suit is based on whatever you don't have, you can find a way to be appreciative for what you do have. And if you have enough consciousness to realize that this person is toxic and you realize that that's not who you want to be, one of the best things that you can do for them is show them the energy of somebody who's not toxic. Does that mean you push your agenda on this person till they don't get it? No, but you don't allow them to change you into who they are. You become the happy vampire. When you bite them, they don't want to suck blood. They want to be happy too. Mm. So that's another way that we can deal with people who are toxic because it's easy to get somebody says something off the wall to you, but well, we've been taught to say Some something off. Back. Yeah. So when we had our discussions back in the day in reference to you can actually be happy every day. Yes. Monique looked at me like, uh, and on what planet? You romp a room. I see you, Miss Sally Duncan. Uh, what you talking about? Well, Captain Chesapeake. Right. But the reality is, what is it that makes you sad? What is it that makes you mad? It's the way you think. Mm. So if you can take your thoughts and be able to be in charge of your thoughts and not let your, your thoughts be in charge of you, <laughs> now you're dealing with people who are toxic and you're running the situations because I know that people out there because I've experienced where they've said, thank you for being nice to me because it makes people sweeter. Not that my lovely queen was not a sweet person in her own way, but 10 years ago, a friend of mine asked me, me to say it's some MC, MC rhymes. rhymes. And I said, come on. I'm about to say, I brought the mic and it went this way. But she had cussed your ass out quick and jump off and only got half of the story. <laughs> and you'd be like, well, wait, oh. hold, hold, hold up, hold up, you ain't. Did you hear them all the way out? And see, what we've always prided ourselves on is saying to each other what we needed to know, not what we wanted to hear. So there would be situations where I don't have a dog in a fight. It's just her and, an, and another individual. And I'm like, you're right. But listen, put the hammer down. Mm -hmm. Put the hammer down. Have a conversation with her. And she will tell you how many conversations she's had with individuals who said, Monique, I ain't even think about it like that. Then the person that you thought was this terrible person come to find out just because you can see it doesn't mean it's visible to everyone else. Mm. 
So sometimes we have to be a little patient with folk and say, you know what? If they get too crazy, I'm going to have to make that move. But while I'm here, I'm going I'm to act right to them. We're going to address something after we take this call. Let's go to the lines. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Los Angeles, California. Hey, baby, talk to us. Okay, so basically, this is such a coincidence that this is going on because I just had a situation with my mom. And I'm 40 years old. I live in LA and she lives in Sacramento. And um, it's just like, I'm, I feel like I'm doing pretty good over here in LA. I'm doing my own thing. I'm here to make a part of it. I'm doing well for myself. And, but every time I try to confide into my mom, she basically has something controlling, controlling. And, then it, and she always turns it into like a, a negative issue. And I'm like, mom, I'm doing good over here. And, you know, I, I can't deal with, with you calling me and bringing this negative energy to me. So I told my mom, I said, listen, mom, I love you. And I understand that, you know, you love me too, but I cannot deal with you controlling me, you know, and I, and, I, and I don't know if that's considered toxic, you know, but I told her, I said, Mom, I said, the energy is not good. And if I can't take this energy, I have to block you from my phone because I can't go on with my day mm. and, and feel this type of pressure from you. And you live in Sacramento. I'm 40 years old, and I don't know if, if she's taking this this way because she lost her first son. And she's really hard on me now. So, I, I mean, I had a conversation with her, and I told her how I felt. And we, we sent long text messages back to each other, and she she told me that, you know, it's her head. So I can understand. So I took it as a toxic, a toxicity, but she basically was saying she's trying to protect me from, you know, the world and what could possibly happen. And, you know, in that it allows you to appreciate her position even more. and. If you're able to try to find a way to let her know you appreciate her position, if you didn't, that you appreciate her position. However, the mistakes that you made, I would hope help you be a better person. And there's some mistakes, my, that I may have to make to help me be a better person. But I appreciate where you're coming from. But the same way your parents allowed you to be you. You got to allow me to be me. Mm-hmm. That's right. But when you can find an appreciation for what she's saying, because at least you know she's saying it not to be toxic, but she's saying it because she loves you so much. She wants you to be all right. And that's kind of as crazy as it may sound a lot better than the people who are toxic because they got a problem with their child. Mm-hmm. 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 So. There's always a positive way to look at that. And fortunately enough, you got a mom that loves you. Come on. She just want to try to make sure that <laughs> you don't make any mistakes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we had a long talk out, and I'm so glad. You know, I, I think that these people should have that conversation with their parents instead of just blowing up and, you know, and, and making it, um, and, and not speaking to their parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk to them and find out where they're coming from. Because that really helped me and my mom's relationship out, and I feel so much better about it, and we get along so well from now on. Beautiful. We appreciate you, baby, and we love you, brother. That is beautiful. Because what he's saying was we did have that situation, Mm -hmm. but they were both willing to address it Mm -hmm. and talk it out. And when you were talking about patience, right, and having patience and trying to work through it and get through it, And someone in the room says, well, what about a toxic person that's a sibling that's addicted to drugs? Well, I can relate to that. And my biological sister, for as long as I can remember, has been on some type of drug. Now, I don't know what she's doing now, you know, but back in the day. And wasn't a very nice person. And I found myself always matching her energy. However she came, that's how I was coming. Whatever she said, I was coming back harder until Sid and I got together in the way that we did. And it's like, you know what? Who 
taught her? Who taught you? Who taught your mother? Who taught your grandmother? And when I look at the women in my family, to include me, we all had this cancer, this, this ugliness about us, this, and we wore it like a badge of honor. We, we, we carried it like nobody better not try me. And if they do, and we're talking about family members. We ain't talking about strange people in the street. We talking about Uncle Billy. We talk about Marie. We talk about family members and we carried it. So, and please understand, by no means do I think I'm the end all to be all and I got it lit because I still have my challenges. But what became easier on the very last conversation, my biological sister and I had, and I must say biological because I do have other sisters and her name is Michelle. And that's been my best friend since the third grade, but that is truly my sister. So I have to make sure I distinguish what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But the last conversation I had with my biological sister, it started out ugly. Cause I'm, I'm like, what I'm not gonna let you do is talk to me crazy and I'm ready and I'm, I'm ready to serve this bitch. I'm, I'm, till my husband says, mom, why do you get ready to take yourself there? What have you done wrong? If you've done nothing wrong, why do you get ready to take your pressure up? And now you're going to have anxiety. Now when you hang up the phone, now my family got to deal with all of that. So I found myself in those moments breathing through just to my sister saying, well, tell me what I've done. So I'm not going to scream and holler. Just tell me what I've done. Well, shit, you ain't done a goddamn thing to me, but. Well, if I've not done anything to you, why are we going with these butts? Because you have a problem with me. I hope it's not for somebody else's. So once I began to talk to her that way, well, now I got to get off the phone with you because you're not mad. I don't know where to go with this. I don't. I'm used to us being toxic together. And now that you're talking to me with some respect, you're talking to me like I'm a human being. I don't know what to do with this, Monique. So let me just get off the phone. And I understood that. And since then, we've not talked again because I blocked her. Because I had to say to myself, I don't want that kind of sickness in my space or my life. And that's my only biological sister. But I also had to see what was right in front of me. And oftentimes, y'all will know it's toxic. But we'll keep walking towards it. In addition, what can allow you to have empathy for your sister is the fact that if you both never had a chance, so to speak, because of the conversations that weren't had at the table when you sit down and you have dinner at night and you both were part of it, she had it worse earlier because she had them longer. Mm. So... Those are the things that we have conversations about where you realize that if you've been bred to fight, you can't be mad at a person or act like you don't understand why they're always fighting. And there was a level of breeding, if you will, to fight yes. in the family. Yes. Where, you know, folks took almost a level of pleasure into seeing this battle because- yes. This is the world that we live in, where oftentimes many of us don't have the strength to deal with outside of our front doors because you've been beaten up so badly before you leave the house. Mm. So then you grow up and you're trying to figure this thing out yourself and you have issues between yourself and siblings because mom and dad didn't say Y'all suppose the kids about each other and treat each other respectfully. And if you don't see the parents treat one another respectfully, well, it's going to be a challenge for the children to be uh, quick to treat one another respectfully. Yes. You know, let's take this call, Daddy, because they've been on hold. Hey, baby, thanks for holding your on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this? Hey, beautiful and handsome. Hey, hey. baby. You know who you're talking to? Tell us. Is this my girl from Jersey? Jersey, from Jersey. Come, Come on, on, baby. Now, Come baby. on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you look so pretty. 
Thank you, Mama. Hey, Sid. How you doing? I'm good. good. Well, I got to hurry up. I'm not going to be long because I got to go for a class. But I have a mama story and a question. What do you do when the person doesn't know or realize that they're toxic? My mom was raised in it. Nothing but chaos and her poison was being money hungry and controlled. And I was getting to know myself in my early 20s. I had a, a baby at 19. I wanted to, you know, play around a little bit. So I, you know, crossed over to the other side of the lawn. And when she found out about it, she took my daughter from me. And because I was so afraid of her growing up, because I was an abused child, then when I got raped, she told me to get the F out of her room. She didn't believe me. So I'm dealing with all that trauma, you know, of her being abusive. Then I get molested, raped. She's telling me basically she don't believe me and don't give a shit. Get out of the room. So all it is that I'm dealing with, then I go to the other side, and she takes my daughter away from me, which is nothing but control. and. I think the mother part of me kicked in and it was like, no, that's your baby, even though that's your mother, but mama's ain't always right. But mm -hmm. that's my baby. How you just gonna take my baby from me? So I had to step up and she damn near was like toe to toe with me about the fight, even though I didn't disrespect her, but I took my baby and I didn't speak to my mother for like three and a half years. And people was like, how can you not speak to your mom that goes against the Bible and you honor that mother and father? But my thing was, even though, you know, I honor my mother and father or whatever, but my mama wasn't right. She was not right. And how you going to take my baby from me? I wasn't unfit or nothing. You did it because I was with a girl. Right. So it took me to leave her alone for three and a half years. And when we finally had the conversation, because God had to deal with her, I had to leave her alone and let God, your higher, your higher power, whoever, you know, whoever's spirituality is, whatever. But I had to let God deal with her. And God whooped her ass. Like, God whooped her ass to where she had to come to me for help, shelter, and everything. And when I talked to her and asked her, why did you do this? Why did you say this to me? Why did you treat me like that? She had no clue that she was even like that. Wow. It's a sickness. It's got to be a yes. sickness within our, um, I, don't, I don't know, our generation, some of our generations, but everything I threw back at her, Mama said, she told me I was lying. I'm half deaf in one ear from her fucking ear. So how am I lying when I could barely hear in my right ear? So, you know, the Holy Spirit smacked me in my face a thousand times when you was getting mad, when you was mad with your boyfriend and things wasn't going right with your man, or did I slap myself and abuse myself? Right. What, right. And just because somebody says that you're lying doesn't mean that they actually believe that. It just means that they say that so you can think that they believe that. She didn't forget. Wow. She didn't mm. forget. It's kind of like when we watch our kids' baseball game, we say, just because he said it was a strike doesn't mean it really was. <laughs> okay? So just because she says what she says, people are going to say what they say because, again, they don't understand who you are and that if she came clean and apologized for things that she did, the level of acceptance that you would have for her, because mm -hmm. you know it's real in a different way because she's never done that before. So this right. has to be somewhat of a change with the understanding that once they do that, because they've been this way for so long, don't trip when they fall back because... Repetition brings on retention, and sometimes you have a moment where you can catch them, and they're gonna tell you the truth. Yes. And wow. Then, and then when they think about it, they're more embarrassed that they told you the truth and actually freed themselves than they felt comfortable with not telling you the truth and keeping this. But you gotta stay on them in order to make wow. them see the other side. And when when you do, it's kind of like your child or the person who you saying you got to work hard, they mad because you made them work hard, then they become successful because they worked hard. Now they understand why you told them right. to work hard. 
So right. as long as you're telling the truth to them, that's all you can do. If they can't take it, what you're going to do? Nothing. Keep it moving. Yes. Right. And I think that's why when my girls, I had three, I'm so open with them about sex and everything. And I had people tell me I was wrong. One of my babies, she's 16. And I mean, we have to realize it's a different time now. I told her, when you're ready to have sex, we have a cold word. The cold word is red and black. So when she say, Ma, red and black, I know I got to take her to the family planning and do what I need to do because they not with us 24-7. You could tell them not to do it, fool them and everything, but they're going to do it. So I'd rather have her protected and have the knowledge and education so that when she does do it, she knows basically what she's getting into. But y'all, I'm like that because when I got raped, I was ripped down there. And when I told her, it was like, yeah, whatever, get the hell out of my room, get the fuck out of my room, I don't want to hear it. But you know, if that had happened to my baby, I know to take her to the ER, have her be seen, check, a sex kick done, call the cops, you know, you know, that type of stuff. But I had to heal on my own and didn't know who to talk to or who to turn to. But and that's not that's not good. Well, though it's not good, you were able to do it. Like though it's not good, sis, you were able to do it and now you know the lessons. And you know how to deal with your three. And sometimes right. we've got to go through it to know what to do with it. Amen. That's you know, right. so right. for as, and just in talking to you and hearing you right now about your mom, it brings back me memories of my mom because my mom was that mm -hmm. person. Monique, what are you talking about? And I'm like, now, God damn it, we're going to play and act like we both crazy. Because me and yes. you both know the story. But then I had to come to a place where my husband would sit me down and he would say, Mama, all you can do is share it. What she does with yeah. it is up to her. But now what I do with it is now up to me. So do right. I keep on trying to have these conversations to force my mother to say, yes, Monique, I remember it. Or do I say, listen, I've come to a place in my life where I'm no longer trying to make you to remember it. However, we can't seem to have any conversations because that cloud is over us. And Too Juicy yeah. just said, yeah. there are too many of our black mothers that have, have had mental illness and didn't know it. So often, oftentimes what you're seeing is the remnants of the mistreatment that she experienced when yes. she was younger. And sometimes yeah. you can't appreciate how you got treated and understand the challenges that she has with treating you differently until you understand the magnitude of challenges she had prior to you even existing. And that's why it's so important to have these conversations with one another and with your mom and so forth, because no one's probably ever asked her what was your childhood like, Ma? Mm. That's true. What was your childhood like? Tell me, tell me about it. Because you may sit up there and y'all two end up crying together. Because through her story that she's telling you, she may then see the story that you're telling her. Mm. Oh, my God, yeah. Mm. And you know what? She said... Um, well, I don't know what it's like to be raped. I was with my man, and, you know, he would just take it. I said, my that's rape. She said, no, it's not. He was my boyfriend. I oh, my God, y'all was so right. She didn't even understand yes. that that was rape. She yes. thought because that was her boyfriend that he had a right to do that. Y'all, that just answered my question. Ain't, ain't it beautiful? <laughs> yes, it is. See, and we love you, baby. Thank you, my baby. Thank you. This is why, though, y'all, I said to my husband, Daddy, could you please do this show? Because it is these conversations right here that kept, he kept walking me through it. He kept walking me through it. He took that resentment away. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. For a long time, when I say I resented my mother, I was resentful because I would run shit. I would run the list down. How could you let this happen and this happen and this happen and this happen and this happen? And you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you didn't. 
And then Sid would say to me, Mama, who looked out for your mother? Who had protection over her? What kind of relationship did she have with her mother and her siblings? And the one thing that for a long time, I was so angry with my mother because my mother put her children against one another. And I mean intentionally. And I didn't understand it as a child. But as I got older, I'm like, why are you talking to me about Melissa? And, and you're talking to me like we two girlfriends and you don't like this bitch. Why are you talking to me about Gerald? Why are you talking to me about Stevie? And I thought I was the special child. And I'm the only one that mommy can come and tell how she feel. Well, come to find out she did it with all of us. So I remember saying to my mother, please, mommy, get the family together. Can you get all of us together? Because we were flying somewhere one time. And as we were getting off the plane and she was taking something over the overhead and she said, Monique, they so mad with you. And I said, who? She said, Millicent and Stevie. And I said, mommy, why are they so mad with me? Well, I don't know. Well, wait a minute. You the mother. You're the matriarch of this family. And two of your children, because my brother Gerald, he was so discounted from the family, but that's been since we were children. So we don't even include him. We try to make pretend, but I don't even remember this cat much, except for what I remember. But I said to her, you mean to tell me two of your children has come to you and said, how angry they are with one of your children. And you didn't say, well, why? That doesn't even make sense, Ma. And then I said to her, well, I'll tell you what, get all of us together. So that way we can have an open and honest conversation about how we all really feel. And do you know my mother would never do that? My mother would never do that. And what I came to was, you don't want to do that because the moment we all start sitting down, it's going to all come back to you. And we're going to say, what the hell were you doing? Now, that's how I felt, right? Till I understood my mother's mother, my grandmother, Edith. Now, when I would hear conversations that my mother and her mother would have, my grandmother would talk about her daughter, Anne, her daughter, Bessie her son, Junior, her son, Kenny, her son, Donald, her son, Billy, and it was a never nothing good. And her and my mother would be going. Well, I had to think and say, Monique, that's what your mother knows. She watched her mother do that. So I gotta feel like I'm the special mama so I'm going to go to this kid, and I'm going to talk about that one, and I'm going to talk about that one, and I'm going to talk about that one. Then I'm going to go. So she just kept this cycle going till right now at 51 years old. I do not speak with my biological sister. I do not speak to my two biological brothers. Now, there are other reasons on top of that. I just don't want to say that. But I had to make some decisions to say, i got to cut myself off because if I don't, I will bleed this poison into my family. And I could not imagine sitting down with David, Jonathan, or Michael talking about, and I'm not talking that talk about, of, listen, we all had to have a conversation. This is the direction we're going in. You saw what your brother did. We all spoke about it. No, 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 no. These were the kind of talk about was, can you believe that? I can't stand her. Well, at the time, I couldn't stand her either. So I'm like, I can't stand her either, mommy. And we just went on to talk about her spree. But once I understood, you did that with all of your children. So you really had the trust of none of your children. If that, don't, if that ain't toxic, I don't know how much more toxic. And, and that's when it comes into play that we can only do what we can do. When we see that what we understand is toxic, People are not going to change. You're dealing with your parents and you can see that they're not going to change. That's OK. But if you're toxic, then you've got to make a change. And if you're not toxic, don't allow them to change you. Mm. And 
when we speak about toxicity, we have Christian Alexander and old Rufus 99, <laughs> who, hey. who, who, for whatever reason, dislike us so immensely, but keep showing up. And what happens is that they don't realize is as toxic as they are right now, you can't keep showing up and remain toxic because there's something here that you want to see. Come there's on. something here that you want to touch you, even though you might object it in the moment to get a level of attention that you need. And this is the attention we give you out of love. But we've been spoken worse to by individuals who meant more to us than an individual who probably does just need a hug. That's all. But instead, they call here to speak ill of the show. And what we're going to tell you is this. It's okay. It's okay. See, that's what my daddy would tell you. I want to tell you something different. But I'm learning patience. And I'm learning that people like you if we try to love on you even harder, you won't go and mess with your family. Because you can't just cut it off as you're understanding. We're seeing people that are very toxic. You're seeing them right before your eyes. And what you're understanding is they can't just cut it off when the camera's cut off. It's with them. So they take that foolishness and that ugliness into their families. So for you, Brother Christian, and you, Brother Rufus, and y'all might be women, who knows who you are? But for y'all, what we would say to you, if you're so concerned about what's happening in our lives, that means you're not focusing on yours. Come on. If you're so concerned about, oh, they got unpaid taxes. Oh, shit, you ain't never lied. But we working it out. That's all. We working it out. That's all. And... At the end of the day, what well, we're saying to folks is, because when you say she had an Academy Award and now she on YouTube and her husband ain't qualified, let's say all of those things are true. Well, how crazy are you for being here with us <laughs> when we are so little? Right. Why would you? And every time, y'all, it never fails. They show up. So listen, for the babies that's in the room, let's show them some love. Because that's what they're asking for. See, as crazy as my biological sister is, my sister just needs to be loved. And that's something that we did not get when we were coming up. We got the necessities, but we didn't get the nurturing conversations. We didn't get those parents that said, listen, come hook or crook. I'm in this fight with you. We didn't get those. And I don't give a goddamn how many beautiful letters my sister posts and how many great things my brothers say. We know the truth. And that's also toxic. When you know what you're posting and saying isn't true, but you've got to make yourself believe it. So for the ones that show up and you have nothing good to say, as my daddy say, keep showing up. Because eventually, You'll either stop coming or you'll want to drop off the negativity. Because if you notice, it doesn't work here. Let's go to the lines. Hey, baby, thank you for holding your own with Monique and Sydney. Who's this? Yes, hi. This is um, Amber. I was calling in to talk to you. Um, are you all able to hear me? I'm sorry. I think I might have the live feed up too loud. Yes, baby, we can hear you just fine, Amber. Talk to us. Yes, hi. I'm calling to talk to you. Um, about toxic relationships, and I wanted to discuss my mother. Come on. Um, even listening to you, I was like almost shaking, thinking about it. Um, since I was a kid, after my parents got a divorce, my mother started to treat me a little differently. Um, I had to go into the military by myself. I had my first child by myself. Um, and I also met my husband. And I look at you and Sydney, and I think about you all's relationship and how that can make people even more jealous when they see someone kind of comes from something I'm not sure if Sydney had anything toxic in, in his life but sometimes when we marry men that have more normal families the toxic people in our lives they start to hate us even more come on and um, <laughs> my husband he's from a, a Pakistani background and um, once we got married he was able to kind of help me get past the hurt from my mother 
Um, even going into the military, she didn't want to have anything to do with me. Um, I actually met you in Vegas, and I um, came back to um, to go on stage. And you asked me, you said, well, where's your sister? Um, this is Amber. Yes. I'm not Amber. But she, you said, where's your sister? That's why she. That's why I didn't invite her back, because I feel like I've done a lot better in my life without my sister and my mother with me. Because I feel like my mother sends my sister kind of with me to see what I'm up to, because she's not invited. Even um, in May, I graduated with my master's degree, and it was the hardest thing. I had to tell my mother that she could not come to my graduation. Come on. Well, um, congratulations, a, though. Yes. I got a lot of backlash for it, but my husband was there to help me through that, and I, it's this guilt. I have always carried this guilt of any time I don't take my son to see my mother, any time I don't call my mother, or when I won't let my mother into my life or come and visit me to kind of shut my home down, because those spirits stay in your house even after people leave. Yes. And anytime I haven't done it for my mom, I've always felt guilty. But I think that's a lot of a lot of why people have toxic people that stay in their lives and why they let them control their lives because of that guilt yes. of saying, this is my mother. She birthed me. You know, what? I, there's no way I can invite my mom to my graduation. Yes, it is a way. Because it's either my mom would come and make everybody miserable and leave. And me and my husband, the person that I should be focused on, the number one person, him and my son, it's either that or she don't come and we have a great time and I have to deal with her on the back end. Yes. And that's what a lot of people are going to have to do. Even holidays, you know, holidays, people feel like they must be with these people. And it's like, well, I mean, it's Christmas. I can't not see my sister. It's Thanksgiving. I can't not see my brother. But when you have a family and you have kids and, you know, even the great support that, that you have, Monique, which is, you know, Sydney. And even I can even hear when he says certain things on the lives. It's kind of, some of the same stuff that my husband says to me. And it's not about letting people go and cutting them off, but it's also about your spiritual health, you know? And that yes. really does, I feel like it really puts a barrier in marriages. And for our first three years of marriage, my husband knew if, if I spoke to my mother when he came home. I didn't even have to say anything. I could fake it. He knew. That's how thick that spirit was in my house. You know what? Here's what's beautiful. Our stories aren't unique. What 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 is unique is we are now saying it out loud. That's it. And we're beginning to understand as the callers are calling in, as the people are leaving messages, most people are saying, and I'm not surprised, it's with the mother. It's with the mother. It's with the mother. Because we look at the mother as, I know for me, my mother was my hero for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. I couldn't see this woman doing anything wrong because it was my hero. And when I had to come to the realization, she's your mother, but she's another woman. And when I see comments like mothers can get jealous of their daughters when they do see that their daughters are being loved and, and they're in a nurturing relationship. I remember my mother saying to me one time, You've given Sydney all the power. And I said, ma'am, she said, yeah, you've just given all your power to Sydney. And I said, no, mommy, what you're seeing is, is me giving him respect. Yeah, that's respect. That, but that's something that she's never given to my father. My mm -hmm. mother was that type of mother that I ain't going to argue about it, but I'm going to just do it my way. I'm not asking you how you feel about it. I'm going to do it and then we talk about it later and it's going to be what it's going to be. Well, that's not how I operate with my husband, nor does my husband operate with me that way. So in my mother's mind, all she saw was, oh, you didn't gave up your power. Not understanding, mommy, this is called respect. But then I had to understand, though it was my mother, I'm looking at a woman who's jealous, who's envy, who is very negative. And the, the painful part for me came in when I had to say, that's my mother. That's what was painful. But then once I came to understand and through the conversations, because it took some years, this just didn't happen overnight. It took years of Sydney having conversations with me and him saying, listen, don't judge your mother so harshly. Who taught her? Who showed her? Who took her hand? It damn sure wasn't my grandmother. It certainly wasn't my father. 
So now that I'm a grown woman, well, now she's so set in her ways, I couldn't break through what she was so conditioned to do. And I got to a place where I was done breaking through and I had to say, let me take my hands off of it and I wish you well for the rest of your life. I just can't be a part of it. What point does this break? You know, it's, it's, I, know it's, I know it's with different cultures and everything, but it feels like it's a lot of it in the African-American community. Well, it's a lot of it in the African community because that's the community that you live in. <laughs> right. That's going to mean we know. What, 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 what happens is that's oftentimes something that's overstated, but really the truth of the matter is it's a part of the human dynamic. It's kind of like my first day in psychology 101 at Morgan State University, and Dr. Carter said to me, uh, well, to the class, define what is normal. You got some upper class in the class, normal is this and normal is that. And then I said to Dr. Carter, I said, that's not even real. It's not even a real term. There is no way to define what normal is because normal is specific to you. And you might feel abnormal until you find a slew of people that are just like you. And that's why you say, oh my God, I've gone through the same thing. So what we normally deal with is kind of like this. The way you see and deal with your mom is the way you see and, see and deal with your mom. Somebody has a different issue, but what we, the way in which we use what we get from them, that's the real deal. Because I, I look at my dad, he was a blessing because what he did was show me in his abuse from a physical and verbal standpoint, what not to do and how not to be. And when my grandmother would tell me stories about how my grandfather mistreated her, what she basically was teaching me how to be when I got with her. Mm. So you get an opportunity through all of what you did not to reinforce all of the positive that you're going to be. And you've got no excuse not to do right by others. And you've got no excuse. See, when we deal with people who are toxic and we understand they're toxic, we've now got no excuse for being toxic because we know what that toxicity feels like. We love you, baby. I love you too. It was nice seeing you in Vegas. Thank you, guys. All right, sweetness. Come on, y'all. We're talking about it. How do you deal with toxic people in your life? How do you do it? And hey, my Corey, hey, my sweet baby. How do you deal with that? And hey to our babies in Sweden. There were some babies in here from Sweden. How do you deal with it? And I think that these conversations are really important because what we're finding out is our situations aren't unique. And when we keep it inside and we keep quiet, that's when the sickness really kicks in. Because we feel like ain't nobody dealing with this but me. So ain't nobody going to understand it. So I just ain't going to say nothing. Start saying it, y'all. Start saying it and see if it makes a difference. Start having those real conversations with the family you created. The one you asked for. If you see a problem, deal with it. Address it before it becomes not a problem. Now it's resentment. Let's take this last call of daddy. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Uh, I'm Sabrina. Call from Blaine, California. Say it again, baby. I'm Dina calling from Vallejo, California. Dina Turner. Hey, Dina. Talk to us, baby. Okay. So um, this, I, I'm so shocked to be on right now. I thank you, Monique. I not only thank you for this opportunity, but I thank you for giving me a few minutes of your experience. Oh, you love my sweet mama. <laughs> yes, baby, it's me. I, I'm so happy right now. I really, it's hard sometimes to really try to tell you everything when I've had four different opportunities to talk to you because you know I've been seeing you whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sid, I love you, boo boo. I just love you guys. You guys are awesome. What's that? And I thank you guys so much. So let's get to the subject matter. I really wanted to tell you this. Um, yes, I have a toxic mother too. I have not spoken to my mother in three years. Um, this has been a real difficult situation to even get to this point in my life. At the age of six, my mother gave us away. 
And when she gave us away, I did not understand any of it. And because of the situations that she was doing, my father, who was in the home, did not even know that my mother did what she did. So my father worked, he worked, my father worked two full-time jobs for over 37 years. And the only thing that my father wanted to do was provide for his family. But when you're dealing with a toxic person who has the mentality of what can you give to me? Uh, uh, he's only about the money. That's the only thing that I get can get from him. Uh, there's nothing else he can do for me. And, and it caused a problem in the home. So she gave us away. Not all of us returned home. I have a sister who's in her 60s, and I don't know where she is to this day. Wow. Um, I don't know where she is. Uh, she was a product of, a, and I'm just, I, I feel like I could tell you this. She was a product of a bad abortion. Uh, you know, the, the way the current climate is, uh, people don't understand that when people want an abortion, they're going to get one. On. Um, and my mother was, was one of those that tried and it failed and my sister was born. So she was born with mental disabilities and things of that nature. My mother beat her and she ended up awarding her to the court. I have not seen my sister. I loved my sister and my mother allowed her to just disappear off the face of the earth. That took a long time for me to get past because I had to come to the realization that my mother didn't want children. She told me to my face that she did not want me to be born. She said, I wish you were never born. When she told me that she wished that I was never born, I realized like that and then how to leave this toxic situation. Um, uh, cause I tried to take my own life that same day. Um, I was devastated that it didn't work. Um, but for some reason, I don't know how I survived because I did everything I could to just say I'm done with it. And I learned how to do this from my mother. My mother told her children how she tried to commit suicide as well uh, while we were running around as children in the home. So I learned how to do this from her. Generational curses is nothing to play with. So I went through this journey of um, living in this toxic home. And I had my grandmother on my father's side, and she saved me a long time. When I had the opportunity to leave my house and go stay with her in Oakland, it was everything to me. And my grandmother was a mean cuss. She was a, <laughs> my grandmother on my father's side. She did snuff and drank like a fish. And she was mean as I don't know what. And I love that woman to her core. And when she ended up passing away, when I turned 16, she passed away. <laughs> And I didn't have no refuge no more because I didn't feel safe with my mother. I didn't feel protected by my mother. And I think that's like the problem that we have in our community. Now, I'm 49 years old, Monique, so you and I are not that far in age. So we're from that generation of, of parents that keep secrets and, and think that that's who actually work when they're beating their children, physically and mentally abusing their children. My sister Valerie got the worst of the views. I came up from school one day and she was tied to the bunk bed like an Indian and, and just tied to it just for no reason. So the toxicity in my home was running rampant. And my grandmother was my refuge. And when she passed away, everything about me shut down because I didn't know how long I was going to live. And so situations came about where my mom was yelling at me, screaming at me throwing things at me. My mother was extremely violent. She told me that she wished I was never born, so I tried to take my life. I was wound up in a hospital, and uh, that was like a place where I finally had an opportunity to speak my mind. I was raised in a household like you're raised in prison. I was raised in fear. I didn't have the ability to speak my own mind. I didn't have the ability to speak. If I did not say the words that aligned up with her mindset, then there was nothing for me to say. So it was more like being in prison. And if anybody you know you're incarcerated for 20 years, when you're set free, don't mean you're free in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have people to teach you and show you things, you're kind of walking around life oblivious. You're numb. You don't have no sense of, of, of ability to think on your own, to speak on your own. You have absolutely no creative skills. Those are dead. And that was my life. And so to be able to be in this hospital, 
under a 72-hour watch that turned into a two-month stay, I was able to finally, like, tap into things that I never tapped into before. And before I was able to get completely a full understanding of who I was, my mother came to the hospital, caused a whole violent scene, and drug me out the hospital. Took me home that night and verbally and physically abused me when I was not fully released yet. And that was just traumatic to the point where I couldn't stay in the house. I had to go to work with my father from sun up to sun down and then go to school because I could I was not safe around her. You know, um, if if I I just want to jump in for a second because some of the people are putting in the comments that this is so sad. And I want y'all to understand something. This is not sad. This is so beautiful. Because being able to get it off of you, being able to speak about it, what you're saying right now, my sweet baby, is probably saving somebody's life that's listening because they're thinking, I'm in this by myself. Who else? Nobody else's mom would do them this way or treat them this way. So I want y'all to understand something. The reason why we allow, and we love you, my baby. You, you know I love you. And I love my boy. To make, that's, this is what made my, my, my king hat, my queen. That's all right. Crown. That's all right. Yes. I love y'all. But what happens is, is with these conversations and with people calling and sharing, whether you understand it or not, it's saving somebody that's listening. If it's even saving the person that's saying it. Because what we're saying is when you call into Monique and Sydney's open relationship, you can be open and you can say what you need to say so that you may feel a little different from when you picked up the phone to when you hang up the phone. And, and, and when people are saying, and that's the ultimate goal, that it is positive. The, the story behind what happened, it's sad that someone would revert to being that way towards their child. Yes. And I think well, obviously that's what they're saying. Can I say something real quick, Sid? Sure. This is what I realized because I had to go through this pain and pain and pain for so long. But so when I became an adult and got on on my own and started reading, because Monique, you said something that we as the people don't do. We don't read. We don't research. We don't dig. And so I began to read. I began to research. I began to dig. And I began to realize that my mom got a lot of problems. And she's got a lot of hurt on her. A lot of hurt that she has not been in a position to get help from because people in our generation, our parents don't get help. They don't they don't take accountability, but they sure don't get any help. And so unfortunately, you know, they end up sitting in stress and in strife and in anger and in bitterness. And people like you, Monique, and, and I feel like I'm walking on this thing myself. If we can see our parents as people. And see them as people that have lived this life and had just as many struggles as we have, then we need to stop kind of taking it too much in so much because I had to learn to come out of that. And I had to cut everyone kind of a loose, like allergic reaction, in order to see what really works for Tina. What kind of person is Tina? What kind of person is that she's going to accept as far as friendship in her life? What kind of people is she going to have in her life that's going to either be a real friend that's going to build her up or tear her down? If they're going to tear her down, do you know how to deal with confrontation? Do you know how to properly talk to people in love and let them know, boom, this is not how I roll? I had to go through this whole process, and it took years and years and years for me to get to this point. And Monique, I'm going to tell you this. The completion of my fear ended when I spoke to you. Mm. Well, you it know what? Because when you walked on that stage, I said this before, you give a voice to the voiceless. I haven't had the ability to be able to speak my mind and say what I wanted to say. So after so many years, I didn't know how to articulate. But to have you stand on that stage and say everything that was in my head, I began to like freak out because number one, I knew I wasn't alone. But number two, it was like I just got my gas tank filled up. And like, just know minute. this, we fill wait, up, wait, wait we fill up each other's gas tank. That's what we you know do. What I mean? Yes, we I'm do that for each other, baby. Gas, baby. I got premium gas. I got that 4 dollars gas. Come gas. on now. Well, we get, we, 
We didn't talk to the end of the show. So we're yeah. going to talk. We're going to continue this next week on the show. <laughs> it's four o'clock. We love you, baby. Take care. Come on, y'all. We talked about it today. How do you deal with toxic people? And if you didn't get it on this go round, replay it back and listen to it. That's all. That's all we're saying. And we appreciate y'all for listening, baby, because y'all could have been anywhere else. But y'all chose to come in here with us to Monique and Sydney's open relationship. So tell a friend, tell another friend, and you, Christian Alexander, tell 10 more friends. Tell them. And you, Rufus, tell 20 more friends. Tell them. Come on, like my daddy says, the mind is like a parachute. It is no good unless it's open. We love y'all. Take care.